Four months ago, I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and it would have been a huge learning curve if it wasn't for this mouse. Hi, I'm Jared with VisibleTour.com, and today we are gonna talk about fast editing in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve has blown my mind over the last four months. I have not looked back at Premiere Pro. I've been super excited about it, but I know a lot of you are hesitant about jumping ship and going into Premiere Pro, or maybe you've had some hiccups with your editing. Well, I'm gonna give you awesome tips, two of them to be specific, two tips that is gonna help your editing flow, especially if you have come from Final Cut or have come from Premiere Pro, because these are actually built into DaVinci Resolve. The other one, I'm gonna show you is actually specifically this mouse, which is a programmable mouse, works amazing. Let me talk about it for a second. You got a second, right? Let's talk about this mouse. This is the Logitech MX Master 3S. This is an amazing tool, especially when it comes to video editing. I've been using this for about five months. Before this, for about two years, I was using this one, which is the MX Master 2S which is also an amazing mouse. Why are they amazing? Well, they're programmable. Every single button can be programmed on here for cutting, for pasting, for any kind of edit specific to any application you want. Each application can have its own specific macros to it, which is amazing because it should make your workflow a lot faster. So when I'm editing, I'm editing with my right hand on the mouse, cutting, pasting, and on my left, control Z a lot because I'm making mistakes. And if you don't know control Z, it should be your friend because it's the undo. And I have to undo a lot of stuff in my edits because I'm not perfect and neither are you. And that's why control Z is amazing. And maybe your control Z should be right programmed on this mouse. So why did I switch from the 2S to the 3S? And what is the big difference? Well, first of all, let me tell you the similarities. Their layout is very similar, their buttons are very similar, and how you program them is absolutely similar. But the difference comes with the noise and the precision. So, listen. This is the 3S. That is the 2S. I could not stand listening to this day after day of editing. This one is now next to the microphone, so you should be able to hear it still. That alone is a huge difference. But again, let's go back to similarities because one of the big similarities of this, and that is super important to me, is that both of these work on glass. They are precise on glass, there is no reflection, and that is one of the reasons why I went out and bought the 2S originally, and then I went for the 3S, because these things are amazing on glass on any surface you need to go. That's what makes it amazing. The feel too, both of these to the touch, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or get used to it, but once you have your hand on this thing, it just, feels good. It's not too small. It's not too big. The thumb rests well. And where the thumb rests is a clickable button. You just push it down. I usually use it to open up multiple tabs and then I can choose my tabs. So let's get on the computer. I'm going to show you how to program this thing, but where to specifically start if you're getting into DaVinci Resolve for the first time. Once you're on a project is to go up here in the DaVinci Resolve tab and underneath about DaVinci Resolve, go to Keyboard Customizations. When you're in that, if you're coming from Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna wanna select Adobe Premiere Pro. If you're coming from Final Cut, then Final Cut or Avid. But these will be the typical shortcut keys that you would get from Premiere Pro. And this is what you're used to. This is what I have been used to for the last 17 years. And I don't wanna learn the whole layout of DaVinci Resolve and how they have it. So if you click here though, it changes what those shortcuts mean. I can program them. These are the 
shortcuts that I'm used to. So the application just launched and there's the MX Master 3S right there showing 50% battery connected via Bluetooth. And so we'll click on that. And here we have all the programs. And the nice thing is this is all programmable, every single button and specifically to each app. So this button right here and right here and right here and right here is specific to each one. So where it would work for something in Photoshop and Premiere, it may work differently in DaVinci. It just all depends on how I program this. So in Photoshop, this button does a redo, this does an undo, there does a brush size, so I can change the brush size right there. So if you go to keyboard shortcut right here, you can do whatever you want that to be. So for example, I did control B right here. So control B. So although my right hand is controlling the mouse and I'm doing shortcuts and literally shortcuts, I'm moving it and then I'm cutting it just a little bit. I can hold down the alt button and then scroll wheel back towards me to make the timeline a little bit shorter. And then I can zoom into that timeline just the same as well. And so then I'm scrubbing and then let's just say I wanted to cut that out and then I'm just hitting that button right there. So I'm actually going to try something different right now. This keyboard shortcut control B does do the cutting. But the interesting thing is this shortcut. Well, we've got none right now. So let's fix this. So control C and now this is going to be control C. So if I go here and I click on that and then I hit that front button. I now can do a control V if I wanted to. We've got this as copy and this is as paste. And I never use this, but maybe I should be. So let's go right in there. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna move it there. I'm gonna push it down. There you go. I just pasted it. All of that was done just on the mouse itself. Was this helpful? If it was, please leave a comment below if you learned something new and if this is a so was this helpful? Because for me, it absolutely is. And it has sped up my workflow when it comes to video editing. I'm able to copy, paste, save, and just, it's almost like playing the piano, which I can't do. So I don't know if it's like playing the piano, but for me, it's like playing a video game. How about that? It's like playing a really good video game that you've been playing for years. And now you're just not even thinking about it. That's how editing with this thing is like. And if you found this helpful, please leave a comment below saying, hey, Jared, this was good content. This actually helped me out. And it'll encourage me to make some more videos like this. I really hope you found this helpful because for me, this has been life changing. I love this mouse and they can only improve it. They can only add little buttons all over the place, more of them to program. The fact that it is so customizable just changes the whole way I edit. I can never go back to a regular mouse. And could I go back or go forward, I guess, because I've never used it before. Could I go to the speed editor that DaVinci Resolve gives you? Probably. I probably could do it. It's not cheap, but I probably could use it. But right now, my workflow is fantastic using a mouse like this. And if you don't have a mouse like this, check out the link below because, well, I put it there for you. I put it there. If you don't have this mouse, you could purchase it because it's an amazing mouse. Everybody should have it. If you found this kind of content helpful, please leave a message below saying, hey, Jared, wow, this is really cool. Or I actually have a different kind of workflow and let me share that with you because I'm totally open-minded to any kind of workflows when it comes to quick editing. And also, if you haven't already, and this is the kind of content you like, feel free to subscribe because I love video editing, I love photography, and I love you. I have been really, really impressed with this community when it comes to video editing and photography, and the comments that you guys leave just amaze me and challenges me. I mean, there's questions out there that you guys ask that I've never thought of that makes me have to research and I appreciate it. So please leave those comments, ask those questions, and I'm more than happy to answer those. So that wraps up this video. And if you'd like, there's a couple other videos here that you can choose to watch, um, more specifically on the DaVinci Resolve end. So feel free to watch those if you haven't seen them already.